Here we are at the Meadowview Greenhouse. This is a glass aluminum uh, Juliana greenhouse. It was donated by uh, Jim Bukowski out of Brooklyn, New York. And we had to go up to Brooklyn, disassemble it and bring it back down here and rebuild it. That was uh, done by Bill Shaw and I, and it sat for a few years. Uh, a lot of work involved in these uh, small hobby houses, and I'll, I'll go over some of the details with you. Uh, immediately what you can see, we've got two uh, galvanized uh, smokestacks. Those are for uh, propane or LP heat. And then in the background you can see the um, smokestack from the uh, central boiler wood furnace, which is our primary heat source now. And so let's go and take a look at some of um, the details of a greenhouse. Well, number one, uh, your greenhouse changes throughout the year. You have to be extremely aware of the environment around you and what's going on. So right now, here it is September, September 9th. Uh, we're still getting a lot of radiation. So we do have um, two layers of shade cloth on the greenhouse. Uh, I don't remember what these were. I think it was probably 40% shade cloth, something like that. Uh, but that's very effective. That's probably the most effective thing at keeping your temperature controlled in a greenhouse. But it's not the only thing. So we go in. Let's let's look at uh, climate control before we even look at the plants. The real biggies here are climate control because without that, you're just not going to be able to grow plants successfully. So uh, summer season, late spring, summer fall, your main issues are um, keeping the greenhouse cool. So uh, shade cloth number one. Uh, to keep in the greenhouse cool. But what you then need to do, uh, you also need, uh, and it works here on the East Coast, I was a little bit surprised to find that out, um, right down in here, there, is the evaporative cooler. Uh, that both obviously cools the greenhouse, even in a humid environment it still cools, but it also humidifies. When that water evaporates, it adds humidity to the greenhouse. That's a real big deal. And it's, it's ventilation, so you have shading, cooling, and ventilation. So it's literally blowing any hot, hot air from that back this way and out. And it's actually cooler in the greenhouse during the summer than outside. So that's significant. We can have a 100 degree day here and be in the, uh, in the 80s, uh, which is, a, I think, a big difference. Okay, so we just covered uh, cooling, heating. Uh, have backup systems. So I just mentioned to you that outside we've got, there's the stack of our LP uh, gas furnaces. These are really fail safes. They're small uh, little jobbers right there. And that is made by a company called Southern Burner Company. We've got two of them, 25,000 BTUs each. They don't need electricity. Uh, they have, um, I can't remember what they call the, uh, how the system works, but it's a uh, millivolt. Um, thermostats and so we have a thermostat on the wall and if it hits your set point it comes on no electricity needed it's convection heating it works very good but it's expensive it's LP so um, this has come in handy for us uh, a couple years ago the central boiler it was doing a great job but we had a snowstorm we had a power outage came up here to check and because we had our backup system on these guys kicked in and saved the day otherwise we would have lost everything so you absolutely have to have a backup heating system in the greenhouse. Uh, redundancy does not hurt on many systems. Okay, so that's um, LP heating as a backup now. It used to be our primary. If you do choose it as your primary, you're paying for expensive LP gas heat. Um, what we did, we used bubble wrap on the inside to help hold that heat in. You, know, you have to pay for bubble wrap. You have to take it down. There's labor, labor and money involved. Uh, we don't have to do that anymore with the outside wood furnace because it's free wood heat other than our labor getting the wood. Uh, we can run the green nest at any temperature we want. Um, and we just tremendously reduced our expense for heating the greenhouse. Okay, so that's heating of two forms, LP and uh, outside wood furnace. The, the heat actually into the greenhouse comes from this. That's called a 100,000 BTU coil. And over here you can see the piping. Those are the hot water lines coming from the outside wood furnace. And that uh, has a fan behind it to a thermostat. And when we hit our set point, that kicks in heats the greenhouse with hot air. I would prefer to have radiators here. I really don't like forced air in a greenhouse like this, but uh, radiators would be a lot more money and I just couldn't do it. And that was $600 right there for that unit. Um, okay, so, so you got that covered. Now there's still a humidity issue. So now we go to the 
It's at uh, three to five gallon per minute humidifier. Well, we tried that in the winter time for the tropicals and basically we just started rotting the wood in here. Uh, you always drop in humidity during the day in a winter greenhouse, but this created more problems than it uh, than, than benefits. And so what we found that the primary use for this humidifier, that's tied into our potable water line with the humidistat. The, um, when we get those high temperatures, 100 degrees plus, we'll turn this on in addition to the evaporative cooler. So obviously that's more water evaporation, it's well water, it's cooler, and that plays a significant role as well in greenhouse cooling. And this greenhouse is only 10 by 20 feet, so we're small. And the problem with small greenhouses is large surface area relative to the volume of air inside, and so you're very susceptible to swings in outside temperature. So you really have to watch your climate control. It's absolutely key here. And um, of course, what does shade cloth do? Shade. So there it is the summer and your plants don't grow because they're too shady. So we've added uh, in, here's a 1,000 watt high pressure sodium light. Here's a 200 watt fluorescent light. And these guys are uh, on a uh, photo cell, which is located over here. And that way, they come on when there's not enough light in here. We've got them on a timer, but also there's a little photo cell here that's monitoring light inside the greenhouse. And timer is the first phase. It says, come on, come off. But then within that uh, setting, this says, well, not enough light, come on. So we're not wasting electricity. We just get the light that we need. Now, right now, our, th our fan just came on to keep us nice and cool. It's gonna make a little noise, which I don't wanna hear. But um, the other thing we've uh, done, because it's a small greenhouse, we don't have a lot of space, we have tiered our growing system to get maximum benefit. So we have one, one box here, another box here, and a third down on the floor. And the same is repeated in the, uh, the back over there. Uh, but obviously if you have tanks like this, you're shading these lower benches. So we've had to invest in uh, T5 fluorescent lights. So we have three times the growing area now in our greenhouse because of this tiered system and, and lighting, which again is on timers. Um, and that works really, really good. Uh, you can see we've got Saracenia seedlings growing here. And what we've done as well, we've got ET, EPDM liner to hold the water in. We've got a little pump here. It's pumping the water up to the top tank. Let's take a look. If you can see. And uh, if we go on back here. So that water flows through this tank to what we call a standpipe, which is right, you see it right there? That's our overflow valve. So we keep a constant pool level, and that flows down down, 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 down to the next tank, feeds that, and again, it's like our outside bed system, the water then flows through here. On over. Hits the next standpipe, and we put a little 90 in there. Then down again to the last tank, and then flows out onto the floor of the greenhouse into the drain. Now guys, gals, concrete. When you build your greenhouse, best materials you can use. You don't want to do this again. Forget the rocks, you're going to be weeding forever. Concrete. You can hose it down, it cools it during the summer. Uh, it's easy to maintain and keep clean. You don't have weeds growing in it. Your drainage system, gravity feed drain to a lower area. You're not pumping water. You want to make this as easy on you as possible, okay? Uh, but I'm a big fan of concrete for greenhouses. Make those investments uh, so you don't have to do this twice. Uh, we, we do have a glass house. It's not polycarbonate. That's how it came. Um, you know, polycarbonate is a good material. Obviously, it's better insulated, but you're going to have to replace it in 10 or 20 years out. In glass, you're not. So, uh, you know, of course, you just you got some heating issues, but we get around that with uh, free wood heat from an outside wood furnace. Okay. Uh, other things you need, water lines. We've got a high pressure water system coming from Meadow Creek Ponds. That's good acid pond water. You need a work area, sink. Uh, guess where that came from? The local landfill, free. Nice porcelain sink. Can't beat that. Well done. Uh, one of the little tricks we put in here, from courtesy of the wood furnace, we have a instant water heater right here. So again, 
the uh, wood furnace uh, with the green lines, we have hot water that comes in, there's the heat exchanger, and it heats our pond water. So, you know, in early days we just had cold pond water, but you don't want to hit your tropical plants with cold water. So we can adjust it to whatever temperature we want. We just have it tepid. So when the water system comes on in the wintertime on our Nepenthes, it's misting with nice warm water onto the Nepenthes, and they really like that. Okay, I'm going to stop here, and we'll continue in a few minutes.